Okay, welcome back. This is our next lecture. Um, we're going to be starting Unit 1 after the art historical stuff, and so uh, this lecture will cover the art impulse that I call uh, the existential impulse, right? The impulse to make art for the purposes of saying, I was here, or here I am, or just to, just to make something to say someone was here and did something. Uh, before we get into that, I want to talk just a little bit about the structure of this page and how it relates to all of my lectures. One of the things I do in all the lectures is the very first page to kind of lay out a little bit of an outline of what we're going to be talking about for the, the whole lecture, and that gives you kind of a structure of what I'm going to say. I also like to use the very first page to kind of make a grid of many of the artworks that we're going to see. It uh, gives you a bit of a preview, and it also gives you a sense of which of the artworks that I think are the more important ones out of any particular lecture. Okay, so uh, when we talked about the Paleolithic art, we talked about uh, Chauvet Cave, and one of the things that we I did mention, maybe I covered, was that on top of the, the cave paintings that were depictions of things seen, such as like, you know, of all the animals, um, and those purposes, we also had a lot of other kind of marks in Chauvet Cave, including um, like some kind of like just uh, symbol marks, but other things like this handprint. There were lots of handprints, um, and in fact there's one specific spot in the cave where there are just um, many, many handprints of many different individuals. But then in a, a few places there are handprints of this one particular individual, um, and this particular individual has a handprint in a number of different spaces as well as on that one wall that contains many handprints. And what's interesting about this to many um, archaeologists and to art historians is the fact that because of the odd structure of this person's hand, it appears that their very first finger was broken in some way, that they have a very odd handprint. So therefore we can recognize it as being a particular person. It's not just a generic handprint, it is that person's handprint. Because when we go through the cave and we see that handprint here or there, we know it's the same person. And in a way that is like, that's the same point and the same impulse that we see in all of art, right? To make something that's individual, that represents me, that I was here and I did this. I paired this, the red ochre handprint from the Chauvet Cave uh, with this painting by Susan Rothenberg because I thought they were kind of an interesting pairing and I really love Rothenberg as a painter. And I think that she is very much a painter, although she has a lot to say in her artwork, a lot to say about the world, about the world she observes, about her life. Um, she is also an artist who makes artwork for that kind of very core fundamental reason also of just to make a thing that thing stands as a marker to say, the artist was here, I was here. Uh, and I thought this was kind of an interesting pairing, this comparison between the Chauvet Cave with the Wall of Lions versus this Rothenberg painting, um, one of the famous horse paintings. So we see this impulse in lots of artists, some artists more than others. Like I picked uh, Cy Twombly and Bryce Marden here to really um, exemplify two artists where just kind of making a mark, putting marks on the page, not worrying about necessarily what those marks represent, what they say, but just that they are marks made by the hand of the person. And they're just just the fact that they clearly represent that person, right? Because no one makes a mark quite like Bryce Martin, and no one makes a mark quite like Cy Twombly. Just the individuality of their mark, of their mark making, is the one of the central meanings of the work. Um, so and I thought that those were uh, two artists uh, to consider and think about from that point of view. But I also thought about this issue that a contemporary issue or a contemporary way of making art that many people um, would relate to that is also about making a mark and saying I was here would be graffiti. Uh, when you look at graffiti, like let's say go to, you see uh, trains running through Columbus and you see people's marks on them, their tags, a tag fundamentally is just that. It's a person saying, this is my name, not my legal name, because I don't want to get arrested, but this is my, my tagging name. This is who I am. I'm a person. I was here. And one of the great things about tagging a train, I think, for uh, 
for the point of view of a graffiti artist in the sense that then that tag goes around the country, that people in Austin or people in San Francisco or wherever in Milwaukee will see the tag that I made. Um, so, and I think it's very much a similar kind of impulse that we see going all the way back to Chauvet Cave, the idea to make a mark to say I was here. I included here on these uh, graffiti pieces a lot of variety, including with the, the tacky 183 one up at the top, a very, a very early, um, iconic and, and very simple form of tagging, straight to the point. There are some, if we're going to talk a little bit more about graffiti, there are some uh, terms that maybe should be understood. I'm not going to go through all of these, but one of the things uh, a lot of people maybe don't necessarily know is that um, graffiti actually comes from the Italian word graffito, which is um, the singular, and graffito uh, means any kind of writing. And in fact, like archaeologists, when they're looking at ancient Roman walls, they talk about finding a piece of graffito. It doesn't mean that someone worked with spray paint. It means that someone just with a piece of chalk or with a knife or something they just scratched into or just drew onto a wall and they made a mark. We have um, Roman bathrooms where people made graffito that are like nasty jokes and um, comments and then other people make graffito about how you know God is coming. Um, so uh, graffito is an interesting term but and so it's important to remember that graffiti, our idea of graffiti with a with a spray can, um, is just a, a modern extension of that tradition. So both the team term graffito and then also the term scruffito which um, means to, to scratch into are art terms that are are used but they're related to that other word graffiti um, and then the rest of these terms are all um, terms that are used in the in the field like those people who are actually graffiti artists will use like a term like tag to mean a really quick piece um, that's just a sometimes just a single line letters um, and they're these terms like tag throw up bomb piece street art they're really just kind of describing well except for street art tag throughout bomb and piece are describing just different levels of amount of work that is put into a piece and, and how much area it covers and, and things like that. Street art um, I put on this list as well to make sure that people understand that there is those two things are not the same. There are street artists who do work that looks very much like graffiti but there are other street artists who do very different looking kind of work. Okay I'm going to end the first part of this lecture here and uh, then we will move on in the next video because my well hold on a second I can only do 10 minutes at a time all right get back to you in a